Scoop. Uh, Euro car. That's what that license plate says. This is Euro Cycles, my man. Uh, Chris, if you can send me a Lamborghini, that would be fun. I'll try to review it like I review all the bikes. <laughs> <laughs> bump test, bump test. Ugh. Well, here it is, folks. A bespoke little pasta sport touring offering for you. Something you wouldn't normally see here on the Yami Noob channel. We are checking out today an MV Agusta Super Veloce Lusso 800. Mamma mia. Let's get into it. All right, have I lost my mind? Did I simply cave and finally give in to the sport touring life? And did I finally go and get myself an MV Agusta? No, come on guys, you know that if an MV Agusta is here in the shop, it was provided by the good folks over at EuroCycles. Hit the link down below, they sell and ship MV Agustas all over the nation, so whichever one you wanna get, you can go and check them out and they've got some pretty good pricing on them. My guy Chris over there loves sending me weird and peculiar motorcycles. You guys remember the R18 we had here in the shop. Uh, we've had the Brutale 800 Dragster RC, the F3 800 RC, and now we complete our holy trinity of triple cylinder bikes from MV Agusta in the form of this Super Veloce Turismo Luso. I can't remember the name. Turismo, God, God damn it. Turismo Veloce 800 Lusso. Super, tur why do I want to say super? I don't know. MV, you got to name this thing something more normal. Maybe like the, the 800 ST or something like that. Just, just give us a simple name. Anyways, let's check out this motorcycle. Let's learn a little bit more about the specs. Then we're going to get it out on the road and see if it can finally change my mind on sport touring motorcycles. All right, guys, let's learn a little bit more about the specs on the MV Agusta Turismo Veloce 800 Lusso. No super in the title. Uh, this is MV Agusta's take on the sport touring motorcycle category. They have used the same steel tubular frame and 798cc combination here to the triple cylinder engine as their F3800 platform and the Brutale platforms. However, this engine is detuned a little bit down to about 110 horsepower and 62 foot-pounds of torque. So this thing is a very torque first, not a super rev happy, crazy top end thing like our Brutale 800 Dragster RC we have or like the F3 800 we had last year. This thing's designed to compete against things like the V-Strom 1050, the Yamaha Tracer 9 GT for sure, those kind of sport touring motorcycles. It's important to note that this is not an adventure bike. This is a 100% pavement on-road offering only. It comes equipped with sticky rubber on it, 17 inch wheels. It is not designed to go off-road, although I bet if you had enough gumption, you could take it down a fire road if you really needed to. Breaking down the title of this bike, Turismo obviously means travel, Veloce means speed, and then Lusso actually means luxury. There are several categories and variants of this motorcycle, this Turismo Veloce, and the one we have here is the Lusso, which means luxury. So this is the one that's meant to be for long distance GT sorts of things, nice highway cruising, that whole thing. This motorcycle is about 480 pounds wet and ready to ride, so compared to your big adventure bikes, definitely a lot lighter, but compared to a sport bike, kind of on the porky side, let's be honest here. Uh, this motorcycle actually utilizes a slightly longer swing arm than the F3 and the Brutale platforms, and that's to give it more stability, a little bit longer wheelbase, a little bit more sure-footedness, and the rake is actually a little bit mellower as well, so this bike does not tip in and isn't as razor sharp as something like the F3. Uh, you've got gigantic 34 liter luggage on this bad boy over here. Uh, definitely a perfect companion to take on a long ride. You can put your helmet, sandwiches, change of clothes, toothbrush, whatever else you need on this bike to go out and hit the open road and do a big 1,000 mile tour on it. Uh, this bike also features a 4.8 gallon tank. I actually just filled it up before I went out and rode it. And uh, although that's probably not as much as you guys are anticipating on a sport touring motorcycle, I bet you you could see with easy going riding, some pretty good mileage figures on this thing. I would probably quote between 180 to 200 miles to this tank. 
It's got a semi-active sax suspension unit up front, a 43 millimeter fork, which is a pretty beefy size. It's got a gas charge rear shock as well, both managed by MV Goose's chassis stability control software. So this thing is pretty advanced. It's got a five and a half inch TFT, IMU, all kinds of cool tech and features. And one of the biggest standout features on this motorcycle is this smart clutch system. This bike is actually equipped with a version of a recluse clutch like you'd see on a dirt bike. And so that means you can actually start it up in first gear, let the clutch out, the bike's not gonna go anywhere. You actually have to twist the throttle and then it can go. You can use the clutch like normal, but after I've been riding around for a little bit, I didn't really feel the need to, but that's definitely one of the strangest features on this bike. But this is a bike that is not short of any quirks and strangeness, so let's get it out on the road and see how it rides. All right, folks, taking the MV Agusta Turismo Veloce 800 Lusso out for a quick spin, seeing what it feels like on the road. And uh, the first thing I gotta tell you, man, is uh, why are MVs so damn quirky? They are the quirkiest, weirdest bikes. They have so many peculiarities that are only specific to MV Agusta. Let me show you guys some of this stuff, okay? First of all, uh, this bike, as we mentioned at the shop, has the smart clutch system, which is basically a recluse clutch, which is something you really only see on uh, dirt bikes and that sort of thing. You don't see them on touring bikes, on street bikes, really. So I'll start this thing up. Breathe to life the delicious 798cc triple, as we mentioned. Love the uh, triple exit exhaust here. Clear clutch clever, whirring away. Get a little revs here. Sounds really good. But let me show you guys. This <laughs> smart clutch system. There's so many weird things about this bike. Okay, you jump on it, right? And first of all, check out what this bike does, okay? I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it in first here. And check this out. I've got my foot on the rear brake. If I hold it long enough, all of a sudden, I get some flashing lights happening on the bike. And you would think, well, there's some sort of error code. What's happening? But you release the brake, and they're gone. So for some reason, I don't know why, if you sit at a light long enough with your rear brake or your front brake uh, activated, which is very common to sit at a uh, traffic light with your rear brake on, that's pretty normal, all of a sudden the bike starts flashing at you. Really weird. And so, as I was saying earlier, we're clicked into first using this uh, recluse clutch system. Watch my clutch here. Nothing happens. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing ever, man. I've only ever ridden a recluse clutch on a dirt bike before. I've never ridden it on a street bike, so my brain is just, like, broken trying to ride this thing around. But, uh, I mean, you can use the clutch, though, as I'll show you guys here. You can pull on the clutch and then select neutral, or if I can try to find, it's an Italian motorcycle, so neutral always is a little hard to find. But you don't even need neutral, because you can just pull the clutch out and it'll just go. So easily the quirkiest thing on this motorcycle is, is neutral there. Uh, as we mentioned in the shop, there's so many other little small bits and bobs here and there. But without further ado, let's ride the dang thing and see how she goes. Take off with our throttle like a, like a scooter. And then using our up and down quick shifter here, this motorcycle basically functions like a, uh, like a DCT, but one in which you control the gear shifts. Uh, with the uh, shifter down below, so you don't have like paddle shifters on the uh, actual handlebar or anything like that, which is a bit different than the DCT system. Uh, I also apologize if the audio quality is poor. It is extraordinarily windy here today in Austin. Uh, I was riding up here to this location and uh, I'm just getting blasted around by the wind everywhere. I don't know if you guys can tell on camera, but it is very, very windy today. So taking this MV Agusta Turismo Veloce 800 Deluso out and around some fun little twisty roads here. What do I think? Well, as I mentioned, this thing is based on the same frame and same architecture as the F3 800, as the Brutale 800. This is the same tubular seal frame because uh, MV Agusta could not actually budget in you know, some uh, some new frame or some bespoke thing. So the engineers kind of had to work with what they had for this thing. And they did a pretty good job. This thing doesn't really feel like the Brutale or the F3 very much uh, because it's got a new subframe. The geometry's a little bit different. The ergonomics are different. I got this big windscreen in front of me. And what you end up here is with a 
you know, a sport touring option that is very comfortable on the side of the tire, it doesn't really mind being on the side of the tire, and yet very rewarding and relaxing to take down your favorite road. Uh, these sport touring motorcycles are a ton of fun to just chuck down a couple twisty roads and to make your way down to a long ride out to a lunch or something, which is what I am actually doing today. Uh, these bikes are really, really sweet for long distance pavement riding, nothing off road, doesn't pretend what it needs to be. And it's so funny because adventure bikes are basically just these motorcycles with an 1821 wheel setup. Uh, this thing isn't really that different than an adventure bike. It's got six inches of travel front and rear, which is pretty decent for, you know, a, uh, a motorcycle that's not designed to, to go off road, but that kind of plushness really allows you to really enjoy this motorcycle uh, around town and on the side of the tire and stuff. We're gonna see if we can get around this BMW if we get a clearing here. I will show you guys the passing power on this slightly detuned triple cylinder engine from MV Agusta. We're just gonna make our way around right here. Easy does it. And we'll continue on our way having some fun with our motorcycle. One of the fun things about sport touring bikes is that they are like, you don't really have to lean off the side of the bike. You can kind of just ride them in a completely neutral riding position and just enjoy, which is a lot of fun. But uh, yeah, you can't, you can't really get your knee out and get in the pocket. So uh, despite the name being sport touring, it's pretty, pretty touring biased, less of the sport, I would say. Um, but it's still a ton of fun to just chuck through some, some nice little twisties like this. <laughs> now, despite the engine being detuned down to 110 horsepower, don't let that fool you. This thing is still pretty dang fast and uh, it still is uh, very torquey. It makes about 62 foot-pounds of torque and so when you open up the throttle, it is still quite fun to feel what this thing can do. As we're about to enter onto the highway here, I will show you guys a quick little pull on this motorcycle. I pulled in my clutch and I don't have to. Look at this. I'm in first and I don't, I don't have to do anything. That's the weirdest thing ever. <laughs> and then I have, I have auto, auto blip down and quick shift up. That my brain is literally breaking. I want to grab the clutch so bad, but I, I don't need to. But I'm going to do it anyways because that's how I ride a motorcycle, right? So you can pull in the clutch and then give it some revs, but it's it doesn't really make sense to if you don't need to. Uh, so yeah, let's feel it out here. Yeah, super scoot! <laughs> it's totally a super scooter and it's kind of awesome for that. Uh, this has all the functionality of something like a big scooter or something like that with these giant luggage uh, options that you can get fitted onto this motorcycle and all the little cubbies and everything else and the, the ease of riding it, this thing could definitely take the place of your car or something. If you really only wanted a motorcycle, you, you could actually use this as that vehicle. It wouldn't be impossible. It would just be maybe a little cumbersome to uh, use this motorcycle as your only vehicle. But um, yeah, I think with all the luggage capabilities, you definitely could. Uh, there's lots of features on this bike that maybe I don't even have enough time to really get into today And we got to slow it down here because this is a very well-known spot for law enforcement to pick off Italian bikes for speeding uh, But this thing has charge capabilities up here USB. It's got uh, a couple Charge ports. I've never seen before on a motorcycle two little plugs like this uh, There's three of them. I think I have no idea what they do uh, you can quickly adjust the windscreen right here on the fly, which is nice. Uh, good feature to have on any touring style motorcycle. Uh, this bike actually, as we mentioned in the shop, comes equipped with the semi-active suspension. So you can dial it in here on the dash uh, and change it around. One very particular and interesting quirk I have with this bike is the fact that you can ostensibly change the modes and the mappings on it. Uh, I'll see here if I can do it on the fly. So I've got it right here. It says map selection touring. And now one thing I wanted to note as well on this dash right here, I'll show you guys. 
this does not look like the dash I saw online for the 2021 MP Agusta Turismo Veloce. Uh, this looks super different. So I don't know if this is not a 2021 model. I was told by Chris over Eurocycles and the delivery of the bike says that it's a 2021, but this dash doesn't quite look like the five and a half TFT that uh, I saw online. But anyways, if you look on here, you've got uh, the map modes right here. It says touring. And then when you press that, it says press map to change. However, I have been on this bike for a good hour now, riding it around, enjoying it. And uh, both Spite, myself, and Josh, and Whitney, and even Joe, we're all at the shop today filming something else, and I decided to take this bike out. We cannot locate the map button to change the map. And I feel really stupid, but I feel like it shouldn't be that hard. I feel like it should be right here, just a map button that you can press on the other MV models, the 800 platform bikes I've ridden. Uh, right over here, there's usually a map button. I remember on the F3800 we had, there's a map button. On the Brutale that we have in the shop still right now, there's a map button. So very peculiar that I cannot locate the map button on this motorcycle. <laughs> very strange, very strange. Um, but yeah, the riding experience is like, you know, if you want a Tracer 900, but you want the GT and you want it to just be really quirky and strange, uh, this is definitely a fun and interesting option for you. Uh, as we mentioned in the shop, these retail for pretty spicy, according to MP Agusta, like $23,000, I think. But uh, Eurocycle is actually selling them for 15 or 16 grand. Uh, so definitely click the link down below if you're interested in this type of bike and uh, any other MP Agustas they might have. Because uh, you can usually get pretty good deals on them because it's not like they fly off the shelves. Most people are very reluctant to jump aboard an MP Agusta or ride an MP Agusta because of reliability, because of, you know, quality constraints and concerns. They feel like they may not work like a normal motorcycle. And I got here to tell you guys, they work just like any other motorcycle. They are very weird. Um, they have so many weird things about them that make them super unique. Um, but I, I think that you can definitely get it serviced and have it just fine. Uh, that's a pretty spicy looking Lambo. Interesting. I don't even know what that is. I don't really think about Lamborghinis. All I know is MB Agustas and Ducatis. That's all I know, baby. So this is a uh, very interesting offering from MV Agusta in that they have never really done this type of bike before. I think they started this touring offering in 2016. Uh, and before that, MV's always been known for high dollar, super fast, crazy motorcycles that uh, make tons of power. Um, uh, you know, they're definitely more into that Veloce part of the name and not as much the Turismo part of the name. But for a company that's not really known for making these kinds of bike and using a frame and an engine from a super spicy race bike and naked bike, this thing's pretty docile and sweet. You got plenty of mid-range grunt. We're here in third gear. Roll on the power. The quick shifter system works exactly the same like the F3 and the Brutale, so it feels really crisp and they have a very particular nature about them. Uh, a couple qualms I have with this bike so far, riding it around. Um, you know, I don't know if it's like my my height or what with these bikes, but I feel like I can never get the windscreen to actually buff it wind. I feel like if I put this in the highest setting right here, which is about, about there, uh, it doesn't really do much for me. I feel like all it does is just propel wind to the top of my head and buffet me around a bunch. So for me, I, I normally ride these touring bikes with the windscreen uh, pulled down to right there and just pretend like it's a little naked bike with a bikini bearing or something. The throttle feel on this bike. Now, every MV I've ridden has a bit of a different kind of feeling throttle. I don't know what's up with them. Maybe the F3 we had was from prior generation and the Brutale is a different thing. I'm not sure, but this MV, this 800 platform bike, also has a bit of a different uh, throttle feel than I would expect from this type of motorcycle. I'm not sure if that's due to the fact that it's equipped with the recluse clutch, but I just feel like this motorcycle, you know, when it's uh, on off throttle, especially, there's a weird ramp that happens. Like it, the on off is fine. Like right here, I'm off and then back on, off and then back on, perfectly smooth. I would say between five to 20% throttle 
it it's very strange and you get a lot of engine braking when you roll off of it and it feels like maybe you know it's just like there's too much inertia in the engine I, i'm not sure i'm not an engineer guy so i'm not sure all i can tell you is how this thing feels and when you roll off the throttle uh it's a it's a bit of a strange feeling but this is the type of bike where you can just absolutely crush miles man now a lot of you might say well yeah I mean, it would take a pretty special and brave soul to take an mv agusta cross country would it not and yeah, i'd have to agree because parts availability is basically non-existent out in the middle of nowhere for a bespoke italian touring motorcycle right that would be pretty difficult you're way better off taking a japanese bike but you know life's short this is a very interesting and cool offering from mv agusta and uh it's a very fun motorcycle to ride um i think it has a it has a lot of charm and character about it and i think it's a really really cool motorcycle uh euro car that's what that license plate says this is euro cycles my man so we are not interested in euro car maybe that's a subsidiary of euro cycles and they're just doing lamborghinis uh chris if you can send me a lamborghini that would be fun i'll try to review it like i review all the bikes <laughs> <coughs> oh god <coughs> i'm joking about spit okay <coughs> oh we're back ladies and gentlemen okay i uh, really love the auto blip on this thing by the way i'll show you guys here click it up fourth gear fifth gear lay off the throttle fourth third second works very seamlessly very tactile feel of the lever too which i really like some quick shifter systems are very squishy which i don't appreciate i like this it feels like you really get it into that next gear feels really nice uh twin disc brembo's up front this thing's got plenty of stop and power uh don't even have to worry about something like that um, I think, you know, when you look at the competition, you look at Tracer 900s, V-Strom 1050s, maybe Ducati Multi, uh, if you're kinda, you know, like, it's kind of more adventure -y, but I don't, I don't even consider that an adventure off-road motorcycle. It's, it's silly to think that anyone would take that thing off-road. Um, I think this thing has a lot more character and pizzazz than the, uh, Ducati V4 Multi that I rode. I was really unimpressed with that thing, because it was trying to be way too many things all at the same time. Whereas this motorcycle, it knows what it wants to be. It's a fun sport touring motorcycle. It's not trying to be anything different than it is. And uh, I really commend it for that. It's a, it's a very interesting bike. Oof. Got this red light here. Y'all know what that means. Gotta freaking send this MV Agusta in touring mode because I can't put it in any other mode because I'm too dumb to find the map button. But where could it be? And then the thing's flashing at me because I have my rear brake on. <laughs> Again, guys, MV Agustas, uh, what is going on? I really wish I could find the map, but it's not back here anywhere. I tried this uh, on some of the MVs. You have to press this starter button again for the mode. Uh, that's definitely not it. It's not this. It's not that. This is high beam. This is uh, back here. There's a switch for hazards, which I only found because I felt it earlier. All right, let's go. The Super Scoot! <laughs> I swear to God, I'm gonna get a, uh, a sport touring bike like this. These, these are just so fun. It's, it's so, it's so brain dead simple to ride. So brain dead simple. Let me switch through the modes here. Let's see, set suspension. I got single rider, double rider, rider, double rider press passenger. Okay, that's all I can do. It's just, it's just setting the preload probably at that spring. It's got a remote adjuster for preload as well, so that's all it's doing right there. Uh, I have to say, I hope that this is the one with the old UI for the dash, because I, man, I really don't like this dash. It's super hard to read what the hell is going on on this thing. Um, I wonder if I, do I have traction control on or off? Oh, my TC is off. We could try a wheelie. Let's try a little baby one. Mm. Yeah, you can float wheelies with it. That's kind of cool. Let's try another one. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's got a reckless clutch, but it'll float wheelies in second. Man, this is a cool bike. <laughs> I didn't know how much power it'd have in second gear. I figured I'd give it another try later. I, that's pretty willing to wheelie i'm surprised 
What a sweet ride, dude. This thing's hilarious. I guess, I guess we could test the standing capability, not that you'd actually stand to ride it, but just to kind of stretch your legs after a long ride or something, right, while you're on the road. And uh, surprisingly, uh, it, uh, it works pretty well to stand. You can kind of stretch your legs a little bit, kind of get out of the seat, kind of stretch your back out. If you're crushing down, you know, many, many miles. Uh, I will say, I filled this thing up before I left to be on this ride. And I've maybe done, I've maybe done about 45 miles and I'm already seeing a quarter tank gone right there on my fuel. Uh, this thing holds about 5 gallons of gas from what I saw, maybe 4.8 or something like that. So massive range, not really a thing that's going to happen with this uh, MV Agusta here. You're probably going to have a 200 mile range tops on this thing and that's really going to depend on how you ride it. Oh man, one thing I gotta point out to you guys. I've got to point out this weirdness here for you. Pull over here, and then just freaking don't even don't even touch the clutch, bro. Right? Don't even touch the clutch. Doesn't matter. Super scoot. One thing I wanted to show you guys is the brake lever right here for the rear. Uh, there is a there is a there is a double brake lever for the rear, and I do not understand what it's for. This is your rear brake lever, like a normal bike. You also have this for rear brake. Why are there two rear brake levers? I have no idea. Um, I, I couldn't tell you. I've never seen that before. But MV Agusta just can't do things normal, can they? All right. Let's get back on the road. This thing's hilarious. Taking one of our favorite twisty roads back towards the office. This is old Lime Creek Road. See a lot of motorcyclists on this road. I feel the spirit of the turismo. I feel that spirit coming alive. <laughs> MV Agusta, Turismo Veloce, Lusso, 800. Mamma mia. There's so much Italian energy lately, for me anyways. Uh, I got my Ducati Scrambler back in action, doing the 1098 on track and stuff, riding around this MV Agusta, Turismo Veloce, Lusso, 800. I feel like you can't really not say the full name of this bike. It's kind of like the Fireblade, the CBR 1000 RR SP Fireblade. You gotta say the whole thing, man. You can't just, you know, say the Turismo or the Veloce. That's not accurate. It's Turismo Veloce. It does both things. It does both of them. What a freaking weird little bike, dude. I say little. It's got an 800cc triple making 115 horsepower. Ah, it's no friggin' Turbo Busa, you know? What are you gonna do? Hey, what are you gonna do? Oh yeah, this is this is the road. That's why I was telling me. A bunch of sand on this road. I think there's a big construction project coming up. I'm gonna keep my eyes peeled. I am not trying to go down on some sand on my expensive loner MV Agusta. Doesn't sound fun. I I don't understand why, but this thing does coax some bad behavior. Uh, maybe it's because it's based on an actual race bike and a naked bike that's popped up to hell and back. But, uh, I kind of I kinda want to squid on this thing. And I don't really know why. Cruising. Cruising on this bike, dude. It's completely upright on it, not even leaning on it. I don't even have a knee out, bro. I have nothing. I am completely upright, just guiding this sucker down this ribbon of asphalt here. It's hilarious. Hmm. Some weird squirms from the 
rear end. Wonder why. Bump test, bump test. Ugh. Part of that road is so sketch. Brake check there. Let's hang off the bike. Why don't, why don't we try to ride it like a sport bike? Screw it. Let's see what happens. There we go. Yeah, let's get in the pocket. Come on, let's do it. Let's pretend like it's a naked bike. Doing pretty all right. a lot of fun, man. It's actually quite a bit of fun on this motorcycle. Would I take it to a track day? No, probably not, but man, down a little twisty bit of road? Tons of fun. <sighs> well, guys, as much as I am want to admit it, I really like this bike. <laughs> It's a ton of fun to ride, and it's really quirky and weird and different. And it's got a ton going on that you wouldn't expect from a, a sport touring bike. Single-sided swing arm, looks the business, clear clutch cover. Freaking sweet! What's not to like? Hope you guys enjoyed. We'll catch you in the next one. See you later. Hey! Great seeing you here. Didn't think I'd see you back at the end of another Yami Noob video. Yes, this video is actually over, but if you hit this link over here, you can keep watching Yami Noob. Leave me a comment on this one and that one if you don't mind. Let me know if you liked it or hated it, and then uh, maybe we can make the videos better. Keep improving, right?